Welcome to Global Community Church this morning. And we are so glad you decided to worship with us this morning. We sincerely pray that God will bless you today. If you really know Jesus, then you must live the way that he did. Two of the most wonderful, wonderful words in the Bible. They kind of go together. Love and grace. Two very precious nouns in the Bible. The adjectives that are used to describe those two, love and grace. Words like amazing. Words like marvelous. Words like lavish are used to describe the concept of love and, concept, and the concept of grace because the love of God is the love of God that rescued us from our sins and it is motivated by the grace of God. So God's love and God's grace over and over again in the Bible and especially in the New Testament, Scripture talks about the love and grace of God. Uh, one songwriter writes, Your grace still amazes me. Your love is still a mystery. Each day I fall on my knees because your grace still amazes me. Your grace still amazes me. My faithful father, enduring friend, your tender mercy is like a river with no end. It overwhelms me, covers my sin. Each time I come into your presence, I stand in once, in wonder once again. Your grace, the grace of God and the love of God are two amazing, amazing words. And so we come today as we continue in John's epistle, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 7 to 21. We started about talking about perfected love, love perfected. And there John writing to the saints, he says to them, beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, because God is love. By this, the love of God was revealed in us, that God has sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we remain in him and he in us because he has given to us of his spirit. We have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. John writes, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. By this, love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because as he is, we also are in the world. There is no fear in love, but, love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. 
If someone says, I love God, and yet he hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother and sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And the summary of it. And this commandment we have from him. The one who loves God must love his brother and sister also. Love perfected. Father, thank you so much for this great love. Thank you so much for the concept of love and the concept of grace, both of them personified in the Lord Jesus Christ who came and laid down his life for us. And Father, your word exhorts us that since you cared for us so much in giving us your son, your only beloved son, because you loved us so much, you tell us, you command us, that we are to love one another. Lord, we know that the kind of love that we are talking about is the love that comes from you. It is perfected love. It is sacrificial love. And within ourselves, we are not able to produce it in our own strength, by our own effort. But you've given us the Holy Spirit who can cause us to love like you love us. So, Father, I ask you to speak to our hearts today as we look into your word, may you guide us by your Holy Spirit and may you lead us so that we can better understand this great concept of love. We thank you so much and we praise you. We lay our lives before you. We open up our hearts to you and ask you to speak to us and do a new work in our lives. For the glory of your name, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So we started talking about love perfected. God's kind of love. And John says to them to begin in verse 7 of chapter 4, Beloved, let us love one another. Why? Because love is of God. So we saw last time that the, he gives us the command for perfected love. He commands us. It's not a suggestion. It's a mandate. It's an exhortation. It's an admonition. He says to us, love one another. So the command we said last time, the command is a priority. It is a priority because we see the command is repeated. He says it over and over again. John says, let us love one another. The priority of the command. The command is repeated. Love one another, we said last time, occurs between these, these few verses, verses 7 to 21. We find that word love 21 times. It means that he's repeating himself, and he's repeating himself so much, he tells us that it is very important. Love, the command of love, must be a priority. So he repeats it, but we said also, he restated it. He says it positively, and then he says it negatively. Just in case you do not catch the positive, you will catch the negative. John says, we are to love one another. And then we said that command is a reciprocal command. In other words, it flows in both directions. I love and you love. And we receive love from God. We receive love through Christ. And so he says, we must love one another. John calls them beloved. He's saying, I love you and I'm saying to you, God loves you and God wants you to love fellow believers. Love one another. So, there, John says to us, it's important, the most or the most important thing for us in terms of our interpersonal relationships is that we must love one another. My friend, in Scripture, just in the New Testament, we find that command 16 times. 
over and over again, Scripture tells us that we are to, to care for one another. That term, one another, is used over and over again. It tells us that we are to be devoted to one another. We are to honor one another above ourselves. We are to live in harmony with one another. And of course, it crowns it all when he says to us, love one another. It's a reciprocal command. Then we saw last time that the command is a reasonable command. He says to us, look, if God so loved us, loved us to the extent that he sent his only son into the world, it is only reasonable that the God who loves us so much can say to us, we are to love our fellow brothers and sisters. The priority of the command to love. And then we said, uh, we said that the command is to love also has a purpose. And we mentioned last time the reason why he's saying to love one another because love is the essence of God's nature. Love is the essence of God's nature. Love is from God. God is love, and since God is love, God has shared himself with us. We share the nature of God. God has given us that incorruptible seed. We are part, we are partakers of the divine nature. And John says to us, the purpose of this command is because love is the essence of God's character. Then we saw last time that love is the evidence of our salvation, the mark that we are truly saved, that we belong to God. The life of God is in you, my friend. If God is in you, if the Spirit of Christ dwells in you, if we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, God resides in us, and so it is only natural that we love one another. And then he tells us, love establishes us, that love establishes that we know God. He says, he that loveth not does not know God. And so he who loves knows, he demonstrates that he has been established in the love of God. He has a personal relationship with God. And John says it this way, he says, he knows God. You know, to know God in Scripture speaks of having an intimate relationship with Him. When you come to know Christ as your Savior, you enter into an intimate relationship with the God of the universe. I mentioned last time that um, it was that 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 word that verse is paraphrased. The person who does not love, does not love, does not have this divine kind of love in him. He says that person love has entered into that person's mind, but not in their heart. So love establishes us. It establishes that we do know God, that we have a relationship with Him. So that was the command for love. Then we started looking at the character of perfected love. The character of perfected love. What is perfected love like? You see, when John says to us, we are to love one another, he's talking about a specific kind of love. He's talking about the love of God, the love that comes from God. He's not talking about feelings. He's not talking about sentimentality. He's talking about God's kind of love. And last time we started looking at what that love looked like, the essence of perfected love. The character of perfected love. We mentioned that the essence of perfected love is God. John says to us, God is love. Now, John is talking about the nature of God, what God is like. And we saw last time that he mentions that God is spirit. He mentions in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5 that God is light. And the light talks about the fact that God is holy. And then here in chapter 4 and verse 7, he gives us a third insight into the nature of God. And he says, God is love. God is spirit as to his essence. 
But being by nature spirit, God is not limited by time and space like we are. But then John says, God is love. God is love. God's love, God's kind, God, the essence of who God is, is truly love. And so John says, the kind of love that I am talking about is the kind of love that originates with God, the kind of love that comes from God. God's love is holy love. You see, God, everything that God does is in harmony with who he is. God loves us. God cares for us. Yet we understand that though God loves us, that God also loves his word and God's, uh, God's, has to, God's, character is in, God's character is consistent. And so the God of love cannot ignore unholy lifestyle. And so even when we engage in unholiness, God chastises us or God punishes us because God wants us to partake of his holiness. He punishes us because he loves us. So God is love, John says. The nature of true love, the character of true love, the kind of love that I am talking about, John says, is the kind of love that comes from God. Scripture describes it as agape. You see, agape love, that self-sacrificing love, is the theme of the entire Bible. John affirms that God is love. He says, all through, as you look all through the word of God, you can see it traced out from Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation that God is love. God acts in love. God is motivated by love. God deals with us in love. God is love. Love, it, it describes God, it, 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 it's basically, when it says that God is love, it describes God's love as permeating his essence in all, that he, in all that he is and all that he does. Nothing God ever does or did or will ever do is separate from his love. Everything that he has done has been done out of love. God loves us, and God cares for us. You go all the way back in the book of Genesis, and we see how God loves us. We see the essence of truly who God is. He placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and they disobeyed him. And when they disobeyed him, God came calling for them. And God came calling for them. God came to restore the relationship. God had created them to have a relationship with him. And God cares for them. And God loves them so much that even after they have disobeyed, God still cares and God has made provision for their restoration and for their salvation. God calls Adam and says, where are you? And God makes provision for him. God is love, the agape, the self-sacrificing sacrificing love. The essence of God's character is love. Secondly, as we look at the character of love, I want you to see the source of perfected love is God. God is the initiator of love. He, we did not initiate that relationship with God. God initiated the relationship of love with us. You see, you and I would have been content in remaining in our sins and remaining in a state of rebellion of, against God. But God came seeking after us. God comes seeking after us. Even when we are disobedient, his love pursues us. God loves us. God is the source. God is the initiator of love. You see, agape is the expression of God's nature. Love by its very, God by his very nature is love. God pursues us. God's love is self-sacrificing. God's love is a caring commitment that shows itself in seeking the highest good for his people. That kind of love is a love of commitment. God is the source 
of love. That agape love that John talks about is an attitude that manifests itself in action, in committed action. It comes from God, and God says to us, I want you to love one another because love comes from me. You see, that love is not mere sentimental love. It's a love that is caring. It's a love that seeks our good. Somebody says, God's love is spontaneous in its source. It is universal in its scope. It is long-suffering in its intensity. It is self-sacrificing in its character, aggressive in action, and constant in its duration. That's the kind of love that has God as, as its source. So John says, the kind of love I am telling you about, the perfected love I am telling you about, I am telling you to love one another, and the kind of love I am talking about is the love that comes from God, the Agape love, the self-sacrificing love. So love one another because love is the essence of God's character. Love is the God, God is the source of love. But thirdly, John says, you are to love one another. And that kind of love I'm talking about is the kind of love that comes from God. The standard of perfected love is God. God is the standard. When you and I talk about love, real love, true love, self-sacrificing love, God is the standard of that love. You know, as I mentioned the word standard, it reminds me of a, an ad that I hear on the television from time to time. One of the great hospitals in Tampa Bay is Tampa General Hospital, and they have this ad that says, other hospitals practice medicine, but we define it. In other words, they're basically saying, while the other hospitals, they practice medicine, we define medicine. In other words, we are the standard of what true medicine is all about. And John is saying that God, when you think about love, God is the standard of love. When you're trying to really find out what really, what love is really all about. John says, I want you to understand the kind of love I am saying that you must have for your fellow brothers and sisters is the love whose standard is God. God is the standard of love. And John says, here is the love I'm talking about. God's standard of love, God defines it. God's love, first of all, is unconditional. God's love is unconditional. You see, so many times our love for one another is based on performance. When somebody performs and they, they please us, we love them. And if they come along somewhere along the way and they do things that are not pleasing to us or they disappoint us, we do not love them anymore. And so our loves always have strings attached. But John says the kind of love I'm talking about, God's kind of love, the agape kind of love, it is an unconditional love. And God says to us, I love you and there are no strings attached. God's love is unconditional it is not because we perform that God loves us. In fact, if God had to depend upon our performance in order to love us, we would get no love from God. But he loves us in spite of us. A verse, of, a verse from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, reminds me of that love. God says to Moses, the Lord did not set his affection or his love on you or choose you because you were more numerous than other people. For you were the fewest of all people. 
Verse 8 says, But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath swore to your ancestors that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the hand of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. God was saying to Moses, let the children of Israel know it was not because of something special that I saw in you. It was not because you loved me first. God says, no, I loved you. I loved you simply because of my grace. My, my love for you has been moved by who I am. I am a God of love. God's love is unconditional. God's love is not based on feelings or emotions. He doesn't love us because we are lovable. He doesn't love us because we make him feel good. He loves us because he is love. He created us to have a loving relationship with him. And John says, beloved, let us love one another because God is love. And everyone that love, everyone that is born of God must love the way that God loves. God's love is unconditional. The kind of love that John is talking about, secondly, is God's kind of love. God's kind of love is unchanging. It is unchanging. God's love for you is constant. God's love for me is constant. It does not change. Because love is a manifestation of who God really is. The Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God does not change. And John says, love is really a picture of who God really is. God's love for you is unconditional. God's love for you is unchanging. It will remain constant. John says, God loves us that we, in John's gospel chapter 13, it tells us of the love that Jesus had for the disciples and the love that he has for us. He chose 12. And though they were not the best of men, you know them, they were just like us. They had all their faults and all their, all, all, all their, 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 difficulties and they disappointed him many times but yet scripture tells us he loved them and he loved them to the end even while he was in the garden of Gethsemane and he said to them wait with me and pray with me and they fell asleep but scripture tells us Jesus loved them to the very end through all of their fall, through all of their trials, Jesus' love remained the same. And God says to us that we are to love that we. God's love for us is unconditional. God's love for us is unchanging. God's love is a constant flow. Of his character. God's love is not a slowly dripping faucet or a well we must dig in for ourselves. No. God's love is a rushing stream that flows from his heart into our hearts. And we can draw from God's inexhaustible supply of love. That is why when our hearts are filled with love for God, we can in turn love one another. Because the flow of God's love in us flows into other people. We can truly love because of the love of God. God's love is unchanging. Thinking of God as the standard of, standard of Lord, we see number four. God's kind of love is sacrificial. It is sacrificial. It is God giving his all to us. And God says to us, we must be willing to love self-sacrificially just like he loved us. So God is the standard of love. And that kind of love, my friend, is self-sacrificing love, a love that does not hold back. 
a love that does not count the cost. God loved us so much that he loved us to the fullest extent. So we've looked at the command to love. We've looked at the character or the nature of love. But then I want to transition to number three. We will start there, but we will not go very long. We'll come back next time and finish it up. The culmination of perfected love. The culmination, by that I mean the climax. The full manifestation of perfected love. John says to us, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth, love is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, because God is love. And then, here's what he says in verse 9. By this, the love of God was revealed in us, that God has sent his only son in the world, so that we might live through him. Here is the culmination of God's love. Here is the very climax of God's love. All through the Old Testament, we can trace the love of God. But that love of God comes to a climax. It comes to its apex. When God manifested his love and sent the Lord Jesus Christ into the world to die for our sins. I want us to see two points there. We will start with one and we will come back next time. The culmination or the manifestation of God's love. Number one, God's love was fully manifested in the incarnation. In the incarnation. That doctrine where it, that says that God loved us so much that he sent his one and only son. That whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. My friend, God's love was fully manifested in the incarnation when he sent the Lord Jesus Christ into the world. The great manifestation, God's amazing love and God's amazing grace came together on the cross of Calvary. And when I think about it and when you think about it, it amazes us because we see we lost sinners, not looking out for God, not seeking after God, yet God manifests his great love to us and God sent his only son into the world to die for our sins. No wonder this songwriter penned these words saying, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. The refrain says, how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me, it was in the garden. He prayed, not my will, but thine. He had no tears for his own grief, but sweat drops of blood for mine. My friend, the culmination of God's love, the manifestation of God's love came when he sent his only son to die on the cross so that you and I can have life, can have eternal life, can have abundant life. And John says, beloved, let us love one another, the kind of love I'm talking about is the love that shows itself on the cross. Father, thank you so much for that love, the manifestation of your great love in the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, truly to love one another like you loved us with that agape, with that perfected with that self-sacrificing love. We thank you. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank God for his love. I hope that you have experienced that love today or you are experiencing it in your life today. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you will never fully understand that love that I am talking about until you come to personal faith in Jesus Christ turning away from your sins and turning your life over to God. 
I pray that if you have not done so, you will give your life to Jesus today. God bless you, and may you continue to serve him if you are serving him. If you are not, may this day be the beginning of a lifelong relationship with Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.